Good evening and welcome to the Roden University Center for our Evening of Excellence. This is an evening designed by the Alumni Association Executive Board to recognize and celebrate our Golden Eagles for their outstanding achievements, contributions, and service. My name is Brandon Boyd and I am uh, your host for the evening and I also serve the university as the director for the Crawford Alumni Center where we are responsible for coordinating the engagement and stewardship activities such as events and reunions, the True to Tech Loyalty Program, the President's Club, and the Alumni Association. For nearly a century now, the Alumni Association has fostered a sense of community and a spirit of loyalty among its alumni and supporters. Tech's alumni are its most loyal advocates, ambassadors, and donors. And it's because of this level, overwhelming level of support that it's always a special occasion to be able to recognize our Golden Eagles like we're doing here tonight. On behalf of the Alumni Association Board, it's my honor to congratulate Dr. Morgan Chatillo, Dr. Janie Camp, Philip Gibbons, and Mark and Mindy Odom. <clears throat> it's your, your, uh, your service to and it's your representation of Tennessee Tech that is the model that's set for all Golden Eagles to follow. So thank you for what you do and, and who you are and congratulations. And now, to kick off the celebration, it's my pleasure to introduce Choral Director Dr. Craig Zamer and the Tech Chorale.
Thank you, Dr. Zamer and members of the Tech Corral for that wonderful performance. Folks, it's now my honor to introduce to you the, uh, tonight's Master of Ceremonies, a Tennessee Tech alumnus, a trustee at Martin Methodist College, a veteran of the United States Navy's Nuclear Submarine Program, and the 2014 Outstanding Alumnus Award recipient from the College of Arts and Sciences. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the voice of the Golden Eagle Marching Band, Mr. Bob Luna. Thank you, Brandon. When I first arrived at Tennessee Tech in 1969, after growing up in Nashville, I knew I had reached the end of the world. The interstate was three or four years old at the time. And the only thing between the stockyards and where the bank of Putnam County is on Jefferson now was Clyde Hyder's Cows. There were about three restaurants. There was Shoney's, still there. There was Holiday Inn, which is now uh, Clarion. No, it's now Quality Inn. And then there was the Thunderbird right next door. Now that's El Tap, I believe. And that was it. You know, I thought, if I can just get a degree and get out of this one-horse town, my life would be great. Well, then I met this girl. Her name was Gail. She's now Gail Luna. She is a tech graduate. We met in the, one of the lecture halls over in Henderson Hall in history class. We had two beautiful daughters. They're both Tennessee Tech graduates. And we have a two and a half week old grandson. And I have just opened his 529 college investment account so he can go to Tennessee Tech. <laughs> yes. We are a tech family. And at this point, I have never been prouder of my now 50-year affiliation with my alma mater, Tennessee Tech. Good evening again, ladies and gentlemen. Please continue with your dinner. And while you're eating, I'd like to introduce a few, according to my script, dignitaries. So I guess that means we need to begin with the president. So. Distinguished guest, I need to recognize these people. Oh, and please, as much as you'd like to clap for Phil, please wait until I introduce everyone, and then we'll have all the applause at one time, if that's okay. All right. President Phil Oldham and First Lady Carrie Oldham. President Emeritus Bob Bell and former First Lady Gloria Bell. Emeritus President Angelo Volpe and First Lady Dr. Jeanette Volpe. Chief of Staff Lee Ray. Vice President of Enrollment Management and Career Placement Dr. Brandon Johnson. The Dean of the College of Business Dr. Tom Payne. The Interim Dean of the College of Engineering, Dr. Jessica Oswalt. The Director of Athletics, Mark Wilson. Oh, new to campus, men's head coach, John Pelfrey. Okay, John, on behalf of the Golden Eagle Marching Band at our first home game on Tucker Field on August 21st, we're going to play loud and we're going to play proud to welcome you. Wait a minute. Okay. You're the new basketball head coach. Welcome, sir. We're glad you're here. Next, head coach Dwayne Alexander. Um, football, right? Okay, all right, just checking. Okay, Dwayne, on behalf of the Golden Eagle Marching Band, 
at our home game, August 31st on Tucker Field. We're going to play loud and proud and welcome you to the first game of the season. <laughs> Women's head coach Kim Rosemond. Basketball, right? Okay. Cross country and track coach Wayne Angel. Volleyball coach, no, no, no. I know Wayne's popular here. Wait until I finish. Volleyball coach Jeanette Waldo. Golf coach Pope Brown. All right, welcome everyone. Now let's applaud our dignitaries. And now to give the presidential address, Dr. Phil Oldham. You are the president, right, Phil? Okay, yeah. Just checking. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm not sure how to follow Bob, but I will try. Uh, such a pleasure to be with you tonight. Uh, this is always a special event. Uh, honoring our uh, alums that have gone off and done phenomenal things and it's great to hear their stories and and I know we'll all enjoy that uh, before I get started with a few uh, brief remarks I do want to just add uh, some welcome to to John as our new basketball coach welcome John his son Jackson's with him uh, here tonight as well and two of his his new assistants uh, Alex and Blake uh, let's give them all a round of applause for We had a, a wonderful press conference uh, earlier this afternoon. I know many of you were there, and uh, it's, it's great to, to welcome them to this community and to Tennessee Tech, and we look forward to, to many, many years of success with uh, John and, and uh, his staff and team. As I said, I'm really happy to be part of this celebration, as always. You know, the talent and success and energy in this room is really beyond compare. It's off the charts. Uh, all these alumni that we have scattered around the world make us all so incredibly proud because that's why we're here. That's why Tennessee Tech was founded. That's why we exist today. It's all about students. And uh, it's, I say this quite a bit. It's, we're really in a very interesting business. It's the only business I'm aware of where uh, the customer and the product are the same thing. So students uh, in one sense are a customer, but they become a product of the institution as they graduate and move on to successful careers. And, and it's up to us as leaders and faculty and, and coaches and staff to, to make sure they have the utmost experience educationally while they're here that prepares them for, for that kind of career and that kind of success. And I'm proud to say that that does happen here at Tennessee Tech. It's happened for over 100 years now, and it continues. Uh, we all know that about Tennessee Tech. Uh, I don't have to share that with you. It is, it is nice, though, to see it in print somewhere else. And, and many of you probably recognize this. This, is, this was a recent editorial in the Wall Street Journal uh, written by Peggy Noonan, former speechwriter for President Ronald Reagan. And it's really, it was written on the heels of the, the recent scandals involving admission into some of the more elite universities in the country and, and uh, the sort of the stain that's, that's come from that. Uh, but remarkably, actually Peggy was here on campus about three years ago, spoke on campus, and that experience stuck with her to the extent that she referenced Tennessee Tech in this, in this editorial and talked in very positive terms about what she saw here in contrast to what was happening nationally with this recent scandal. So it's, it's really remarkable uh, that it gets this kind of recognition uh, and that she noted that what goes on here was outside the norm. This, and, and the way we treat students and the way stu students benefit from the educational experience here at Tennessee Tech. So it, it's interesting, I think the headline says Tennessee Tech, it's, it's uh, the best school that uh, you don't have to, to break the law to get admitted to. And, uh, and, but her, her conclusion is really 
pretty compelling that, you know, uh, ultimately when she thinks about that experience here at Tennessee Tech, she says, despite everything else that's going on, we're going to be okay. And I think that's a great message for all of us. So, you know, what she concluded was that it, what she saw here was authentic. She saw students that were hardworking, that they were more earnest, less cynical, and that the bottom line is they were real. Real students getting a real education for a real career. So we are going to be we are going to be okay. So let me share a few quick facts with you about Tennessee Tech today. Some of you haven't been back to campus for a while, so let me just give you a quick rundown. We're slightly over 10,000 students, uh, almost 10,200 students. Last fall, we have a pretty successful retention rate, 75% uh, or above, 24.4 uh, average entering ACT. So we got a really smart student body. That's the second highest academic profile of any public university in Tennessee currently. We're now classified by the Carnegie Foundation as an R2 institution. So we're a doctoral research university of high research activity. Uh, that puts us in a really strong category and we're proud of that. Our current research expenditures annually are a little over $16 million a year and climbing. Uh, we have a 55% six-year graduation rate. Actually, last year was the first year that that we had over 50% of our freshmen graduate within five years. And so our students are actually graduating quicker. They're graduating sooner with less debt uh, and, uh, and going on to really successful careers. We've had record graduations the last couple of years with over 2,500 graduates each year. And lastly, uh, this, and this is part of the message that I had for the, for the General Assembly, in Nashville last week, there's no, there's no part of the state budget that gives you a better return on investment than that of higher education, and Tennessee Tech's a great example of that. The total statewide economic impact of Tennessee Tech is, is over $900 million a year. So that's about a 20 to 1 return on a state dollar. Uh, so if, my message to them is if you, if you want a good positive return, you know, this is a good place to invest. And Fortunately, that I think is that message is being heard. Return on investment is very important to us. The value proposition that students get at Tennessee Tech, and, and this slide just sort of summarizes a lot of that. We're we're consistently ranked at the top of the state in terms of return on investment for the educational dollar for students. They graduate with the least student debt in the state. Uh, about half of our students graduate debt free, uh, and uh, we have the top. Uh, uh, starting salaries of graduates uh, among the top in terms of uh, mid-career salaries and so it's a it's a great value proposition uh, for Tennessee students. Tennis, that's reflected then in Governor Lee's budget actually. Governor Lee was very kind to us this year. We got pretty much what we uh, hoped for uh, and now the General Assembly will continue to work on that over the next uh, two or three weeks and we expect that to be intact. Just to give you a few highlights of that, more than $15 million in additional funding for Tennessee Tech is in the governor's budget this year. That's a capital appropriation that includes more than $11 million. Three and a quarter million of that is earmarked uh, to start the planning for a new engineering building, which we're really excited about. Uh, some of you are uh, alumni from engineering. Uh, the most recent engineering building on this campus was completed in 1971 as Prescott, so almost 50 years old. So it's, I think it's high time that uh, we built a new one and we're, we're gonna be excited to get that project started. Another thing I've laid out though, we announced recently uh, a grand challenge for the university. Now a grand challenge is described by the uh, whitehouse.gov is, is an ambitious but achievable goal that leverages your talents and resources, addresses important national or global problems, and captures the public imagination. Now, we're not the first ones to do a grand challenge. There are other uh, major universities around the country that have done this. But we wanted ours to be different. We wanted it to be unique. We wanted it to be something that was uh, special for Tennessee Tech. 
And so we are going to leverage the unique assets of Tennessee Tech in a way that impacts particularly the place where we live, where, we loca where we're located. We're calling it Rural Reimagined. It's our opportunity to address particular challenges for rural communities uh, here in the Upper Cumberland and around the state of Tennessee and for that matter around the country and around the world. So it's relevant, it's impactful, and it's scalable, which is very important. Every aspect of the campus can participate in this. Every aspect of the campus uh, discipline or uh, special interest group, club, uh, sports team has an opportunity to make a difference. So we're excited about it. We're going to look at areas in rural communities such as health care, child care, innovation and technology, economic development, small business development, career readiness, and rural history, just to, just to mention a few. Uh, now these are difficult problems in many cases. These are not easy problems to solve, but I'm convinced that we have the expertise, the skill sets, and the uh, and the sweat equity capability of making a difference. And so we're excited about this, and I think you'll hopefully hear a lot more about it as time goes on. Um, I also want to thank all of you in this room and many, many others. Uh, we're not ready to announce anything tonight, but we're closing in on a significant milestone in our uh, comprehensive campaign, fundraising campaign. And it, you'll hear more about that in the next few weeks or months. Uh, but it's significant, and, uh, and many of you have participated in that, and, and we have been able to actually connect in some cases, in other cases reconnect with a number of alums around the world that uh, uh, have made a big difference, have made a significant difference. Some of these alums were not uh, well known to us. There's, we have over 70,000 alumni of Tennessee Tech around the world, and they're doing phenomenal things. We'll highlight some of those here tonight. So we've learned a lot about their experience at Tech when they were here. Uh, we've learned how we can connect or reconnect with them and how they can continue to impact Tennessee Tech. A lot of the times I talk to students today, they don't think about it this, in these terms really, but. You know, earning a degree from a university is a lot like buying stock in a company in some ways. Uh, it's an investment in that particular institution, in that university. And when your, your engagement with the university doesn't end when you walk across the stage with that diploma in your hand, actually the better the university fares over the years, the more value goes into that degree that you earned. And so it's important to continue to invest back into the institution and back into the university because that actually not only do future students benefit from that, but past graduates do equally well. I'll tell you a couple of quick anecdotal stories about alums that we've identified through this campaign that we really didn't have any relationship with pri prior to that. One individual, Mr. Perna Sigurdi, uh, we identified. Uh, Perna was actually a 1982 uh, engineering, ma master's degree in engineering graduate here uh, from Tennessee Tech, originally from India. Uh, once he finished his master's degree here, he worked for a short time and then decided he wanted to, to go back uh, to graduate school. And he actually uh, was admitted to Wharton at University of Pennsylvania and got a finance degree. So now Perna is the chairman of uh, global banking for Bank of America Merrill Lynch in New York. Uh, it's a pretty amazing story, actually, from engineer to you know one of the top uh, financial people in the world, actually. Perna now sits on our board of trustees, and he's been a tremendous donor to us uh, already. He's, he's just a fantastic individual, and this is somebody we really had no relationship with prior to the campaign. So uh, for no other reason, I'm thankful for that. Um, we certainly knew about uh, our, one of our famous astronauts, Barry Wilmore, uh, before the campaign, but, but through this process, we've been able to develop an even deeper relationship with Barry. Uh, again, a fantastic uh, individual, made a great mark while he was here. Uh, Coach A is a former teammate of Barry. Uh, 
And so it was not only on the football field, but uh, Barry's gone on to, uh, to represent us at NASA and, uh, and done great things. And he's also a member of the Board of Trustees at this time. I could go down a lengthy list of individuals like this that we've been able to identify and reconnect with in ways that have really made a substantial difference in what's going on at Tennessee Tech today. So I want to thank each of you for being here tonight, for helping us honor these alums that we've, we're recognizing uh, tonight, uh, sharing in their experience, and continuing to support uh, uh, the ongoing efforts here at Tennessee Tech. So uh, thank you for that, and thank you for continuing to show us what it means to live wings up. Thank you. Yeah, I think my, I got my pages out of order when I called John the football coach. <laughs> oh, well, I'll get it back together here. Either that or this will be my last <laughs> alumni dinner. <laughs> Okay, here we go. And I guess I should begin with, it's showtime. In 1975, the Tennessee Tech Alumni Association gave its first award to an outstanding alumni. Since then, 200 men and women have been named outstanding in professional accomplishments or service to our university, their communities and professions. Awards have gone to doctors and lawyers, singers and writers, journalists, politicians and civil servants, scientists and engineers, military officers, astronauts, educators, athletes, CEOs, and even an entire alumni chapter. Tonight's winners include a radio personality whose voice we all know, a couple who's held Tennessee Tech season tickets since 1979, and not one, but two distinguished academic professors. All exemplify this university's excellence and were selected by the executive board of the Tennessee Tech Alumni Association. It gives me great pleasure to begin tonight's presentation of alumni award recipients. First, the Outstanding Young Alumnus Award honors alumni age 40 or younger who have demonstrated the ideal of excellence by achieving success and recognition, becoming ambassadors for this university, and inspiring pride among the faculty, staff, students, and other alumni of Tennessee Tech. Janie Camp received a bachelor's degree and a master's degree in civil engineering from Tech and went on to earn a PhD in environmental engineering from Vanderbilt. She's currently a research associate professor in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering and Institute for Energy and Environment at Vanderbilt University. In addition to her membership in a variety of professional societies and awards for professionals in engineering, Janie has also secured millions of dollars in project funding for Vanderbilt and runs a small consulting firm on the side. She has become a trusted individual on topics surrounding flooding and planning for future natural hazards. She's even published an op-ed urging the Nashville community to be better prepared for future flooding. Please join me in congratulating Dr. Janie Camp. Thank you. I've never been announced for anything quite so well. <laughs> Not sure how to follow that. Um, thank you so much. Um, I honestly wasn't sure what to say, um, put together some remarks, and Tennessee Tech is an amazing university. I am in Nashville and daily drive by a huge billboard that talks 
shows um, Tennessee Tech as the top school for pu top public university in the state. And I grin every time I see that. It's a great value. I totally appreciate the foundation I got here. Um, don't tell anyone at Vanderbilt, but I actually recruit for Tech also. Um, I have a, we have a staff member whose son is at Tech. But um, <laughs> First and foremost, um, this is just such an honor for me. Um, Tennessee Tech always has a special place in my heart. Um, not many people know this, but I started doing research here at Tech um, long before I was even admitted as a student. Um, I would accompany my aunt, Martha Kirby, who's here with me tonight, while she was working on her master's, and I was helping pull macrofish in the library um, as a middle school student. Um, so that planted a seed for Tennessee Tech in my mind. Um, I went to Montlo first before transferring in, so I was a transfer student to Tech and found my way to civil engineering. I always liked math and science, so engineering was definitely uh, on the radar. And um, the foundation and education I received here is what has allowed me to accomplish everything I have. When I went to Vanderbilt for my PhD, oddly enough, I was really nervous whether or not I'd make the cut, and I did not have any trouble thanks to the foundation I got at Tech. Um, I've made great connections through tech and relationships that I've developed here. Um, one of those was meeting my husband, um, Clint Camp, in Geotech Lab. And if you're not an engineer or don't know what Geotech is, it's Dirt Lab. So we were in lab playing with dirt. Um, and then the Nashville community is fairly small, especially if you're in the engineering community. And it's rare to be at an engineering meeting um, for the professional societies there without running into at least one Tennessee Tech alumni. And something that Tech can be proud of, and it speaks to the character of this university, is there's almost an unspoken bond among people that have graduated from here and alumni. And when you meet someone in the Nashville engineering community and find out that they went to Tech, it's like, okay, I know you're good people and you know your stuff. And by the way, how'd you do in Tolbert's structures class? Um, I got an A. Um, but we compare war stories, we share notes about good times and our experiences here. And um, I have fond memories working not only with faculty here, but also the staff. Um, I spent, during my master's, I spent a lot of time actually in kind of the chemical engineering lab, um, working with um, Perry Milton and um, the late Jeff Holmes, um, who recently passed. And they were great guys and taught me how to plumb. And those skill sets have carried me through. I don't do a lot of plumbing, but if I need to, I know how. Um, as I receive this award, I am thankful to so many who have helped me along the way, and I've realized there are many others that could be standing here. I had um, dinner with an, another engineering alumni in DC who's now a CEO of an organization recently, and I asked how old she was because I wanted to nominate her for this, and um, unfortunately, she's two years older, so I squeaked in, apparently, just under the cutoff. Um, but the faculty here, friends and family, have helped me get where I am. And I know it takes a village and it takes a large community to lead to success. Some of my favorite faculty that um, I'm still in contact with a few of them today and some of the newer faculty that have come in their place, we connect at conferences and stuff because we have that tech bond. But, um, I'd like to mention Dr. Larry Roberts, who's retired, Martha Wells, also retired, Lindley Weathers, and Dr. Dennis George, who used to run the Water Center, were great supporters of research. They actually encouraged me to consider research. I was gonna get my bachelor's degree and go to government or a consulting firm or industry and just be done. But they taught me how interesting research could be, encouraged me to consider staying for my master's at the, and working at the Water Center. 
and um, they encouraged me to consider going on for a PhD. Um, I applied to Vanderbilt, only Vanderbilt, and was interviewing for jobs. Got the call from Vanderbilt a week before I got a call for probably my ideal job, or so I thought at the time. And um, they planted that seed and that foundation at Vanderbilt. Uh, I was very nervous starting there, but there was others that had come from tech to Vanderbilt that laid a foundation, and I knew I was fine once I met them. So without faculty and friends and colleagues like them, I would not be where I am today. And I know I would not have the opportunities that I've been given to be involved in the community and work on amazing projects, which um, I'm very grateful to have had those opportunities for. Um, I love education and outreach. And ultimately, on the education side, I had great faculty here that had worked in industry for years or consulting and had come back to be teachers. The only reason I considered getting a PhD was because I thought I would check that box so I could retire and come back and teach. But I never left Vanderbilt, at least not yet. Uh, so I took courses here, not just in engineering, but tech allowed me, because it was affordable, um, it allowed me to explore things like the social sciences. I took courses in criminal justice and things along the way. And now I'm able to work on highly interdisciplinary projects um, that most of my engineering colleagues can't with people in the social sciences. Um, I just want to say, kind of in closing, that tech has been amazing to me. And I hope that moving forward, I'll represent Tennessee Tech well, um, and hopefully be able to contribute more to the university as I get older and wiser and hopefully make more money. Um, I am <laughs> both humbled and grateful to be here tonight and receive this award. Thank you. The Outstanding Service Award honors individuals who have devoted significant time and effort in advocacy for this university as mentors, recruiters, or who have supported other programs on campus or in the community in an exemplary way. <clears throat> Let's welcome our Tennessee Tech Golden Eagles is how Philip Gibbons has welcomed the crowd at Tennessee Tech's football and basketball games since 1982. While many fans may not know his face, they've heard his voice in Tucker Stadium and Hooper Eblen Center for 37 years. And I've been honored to sit right beside Philip in the press box for the last 26 years and on a couple of very rare occasions when Philip has had to miss a game, I've had the privilege of filling in for Philip. Now, you know your announcing career has peaked, and mine certainly did tonight. Now, you, you know your announcing career has peaked when you get to fill in for Philip Gibbons. Philip's 45 year career in radio has reached nearly everyone in the Upper Cumberland. He is the program director for WGSQ-FM, and he hosts the midday show on 94.7 FM, The Country Giant. This station has won seven CMA Radio Station of the Year awards in the small market division, and Philip has been nominated for the CMA and the ACM Personality of the Year awards. He has been the guest announcer at the Grand Ole Opry for the past 10 years, and he's been a stage host at the CMA Music Festival. And he was recently elected for induction into the Tennessee Radio Hall of Fame in the class of 2019. We've had some good times over the years. Please welcome my friend, Philip Gibbons.
I'm so honored to be here tonight and, and grateful to be the recipient of this award. Have you ever considered the power of thank you? It's incredible. Those two words express gratitude, humility, understanding, as well as acknowledgement. And I thank you very much for this recognition. Now, my affiliation and love for this great university actually began in the late 1960s, somewhere between probably 1968 and 1970, when my dad would take me to the basketball games in the old Memorial Gym. I can still vividly remember the, the smell, the sights, and sounds of that Cracker Box Gymnasium. It was there where I became a Golden Eagle fan for life. We later began attending women's basketball games and football games, and when Hooper Eblen Center opened back in 1977, we were there for that first game and that first big win over Vanderbilt. Shortly after that, we became season ticket holders, and to this day, to this day, my parents and Sue and I still have those same seats in Section F, Row A. Our daughters spent much of, of their young life attending Tennessee Tech sporting events. It was really a family affair and, and still is today. Now, I was given the opportunity to become the football public address announcer in 1982 when Jim Raglan, who was working in promotions at the time, he had moved back here and, and took a position with the university in promotions before he became head football coach. He asked me if I'd be interested in maybe, you know, in the position if it became available. Well, it did, and I stepped into that role and soon after became the women's basketball public address announcer and those two positions I still hold today. Through the years, I've interviewed numerous coaches, including Frank Harrell, who says I called him at 5 o'clock one morning after that big win over Vanderbilt. <laughs> giving me the thumbs up, Coach. I'm not sure it was me, but Coach says it is, so I guess it was. <laughs> that was a big, big win for the, for the Golden Eagles, no question about that. I've interviewed players, administrator, administrators. I'm a candidate reader at Tennessee Tech graduation ceremonies and, and just always willing to promote our great university. Tennessee Tech is our extended family, and I still get goosebumps, like tonight when I heard the Tech hymn or the fight song being played. What a blessing Tennessee Tech is, was, and will be to future generations. Again, I am very pleased and, and honored and humbled to accept this award and to join past recipients who I've long admired and respected and congratulations to all of the other award recipients tonight. I'm earnestly grateful for the recognition that I receive for my work. It's not work to me, it's a labor of love. But thank you, Tech Athletics, for the nomination, Dr. Oldham, and Tennessee Tech University, wings up. Thank you. Yeah, boy, a lot of water under that bridge in 26 years, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I had so many stories about Philip that I wanted to tell, and I started thinking about him over the last week, and it's like, no, nah, I probably shouldn't share that one. <laughs> you know, nah, that might not be totally appropriate for the alumni uh, awards banquet. And so I decided to just say, man, it's been a great 26 years. <laughs> All right. The Outstanding Philanthropy Award honors individuals who contribute resources, finances, and personal time to our university for visionaries, leaders in the community, and the region, and workforce partners. Mark and Mindy Odom have become a pair of the most important benefactors in the history of Tennessee Tech Athletics, and they have held season tickets since 1979. Mark graduated in 1978 with a bachelor's degree in civil engineering. 
and he is the Area Construction Manager with Rogers Group Incorporated here in Cookville, and the former Vice President for Highways, Inc. here in Cookville. Mindy was a member of the Golden Eagleettes women's basketball team and played for Coach Marinelle Metters. She earned her bachelor's degree in health and physical education from Tech in 1985 and a master's degree in administration and supervision in 1994. She went on to coach women's basketball for 33 years, spending four seasons as an assistant coach at Tech under Bill Worrell and 25 years as head coach of the Cookville Lady High School Cavaliers. She's now a physical education instructor at Prescott South Middle School. Please welcome Mark and Mindy Odom. Mark, please join us. Thank all of y'all for being here tonight. Uh, unfortunately, Mindy had a trip planned for several months and is, was unable to attend. But uh, we are deeply grateful and humbled uh, to accept this award. My story is a lot like the two previous people here. Janie, civil engineer, love tech, only school that I wanted or could afford to come to. And she was right. There, there was very few roads to get here back in the day. A shout out to Tech Civil Engineering because one thing I left here with that degree other than that degree was at Tech you learned how to learn. And that's a, that's a blessing and a, something that I'll always be thankful for from the e education and academic side. Mindy, on the other hand, was education. When we were in school here, Tech was sort of like a uh, suitcase college. And there weren't the opportunities that uh, Dr. Oldham, his great wife Carrie, have brought to fruit here for all the young, the young kids and young athletes. But um, athletics was a way that would keep you on campus and keep you interested in supporting your school. Mindy was very fortunate to earn her bachelor degree by playing basketball for Mary Nell, who is still an icon in her athletics department. She was fortunate enough to get her master's assistant coach for Bill Worrell, and that's, and that's how we, we met. Um, I, I brought three kids to the package, and the greatest thing you could do was take your kids to Tennessee Tech basketball games, and that's how we met, and uh, we've been together ever since. But she got her master's, coached for Coach Whirl, and when we got married, she decided that the road of recruiting was going to be a, a tough road and have a family, so she wanted to get into high school coaching. And she did so three years at Cannon County, went to state tournament, and then uh, recently retired um, after uh, 25 years at Cookville High School and two state tournament appearances. A lot of the reasons that I'm standing up here tonight representing us, and it is truly a dual award, believe me, because uh, it, it, it takes a team. But uh, athletics has been the bond uh, that's created numerous opportunities for us, from AAU basketball to Tennessee Tech athletics. Uh, we went to over 20 consecutive women's Final Fours, and I think the, the people that get the bond from athletics, uh, it, just, uh, it just puts you on a different road to life a lot of times, because whether you're in business like I am and, an and the engineering part of it, You've got to learn how to compete, and you've got to learn how to do things the right way. And that's one thing I want to compliment Tech Athletics on ton tonight. I've been fortunate enough this week to do two things that really, in one way, didn't have anything to do with tonight. 
but uh, I'm a member of the Tennessee Road Builders Association. This week I had the privilege of interviewing about 13 young civil engineering students and we were able to award uh, over 10 $1,500 scholarships. And just to put that in uh, perspective, I got that same uh, scholarship in the late 70s and it was $400. <laughs> but we were on quarters then instead of semesters and that $400 would pay your maintenance fees for those three quarters. And I'll, I'll always remember those times and be grateful for them. Today, um, while I'm proud of the civil engineering and the business associates and academic associates that I know and have had the privilege of living here and being around and raising our family here, athletics is really the backbone of why I stand up here tonight in a lot of ways. Uh, like I said, Tech was a suitcase college and now it's more like an economic engine. We are the hub of the Upper Cumberland and Tech is the most dynamic spoke in that hub that, that we could ever hope and imagine for. It's changed in so many ways and all of the ways have been done the right way and the great way. And Mindy and I truly appreciate that. While I learned how to learn here because of the affiliation with women's basketball, AAU basketball, and our re now that Mindy's retired and our time to spend around athletics, we, 60% of our life probably re revolves around athletics and specifically tech. Uh, I've got my whole coaching staff here tonight at, at my table. And welcome John, you're gonna love this place. We came here, we'd never been here, came to college here and never left. Uh, development. I have the privilege of working with Leslie Loftus, her husband at Rogers Group. So this, this community becomes really tight knit and it's, it's just a great place to have graduated from. We are uh, so fortunate for everything that tech provides and has provided for us. I will say on a side note why I think everybody knows Mindy for her um, co coaching ability and years of service and competitiveness, I do hold one honor. I think I'm the only dad that's ever been escorted out of uh, Tennessee Tech intramural games on, on behalf of his daughter. <laughs> I think that's a record. <laughs> but I shared it. One was volleyball and one was basketball. <laughs> but uh, in conclusion, I just want to thank everyone in this room. Uh, everyone in this room touches all facets of the best part of life and just looking around and how privileged and proud everyone's face is when you speak of tech, the connections that you make in the business world, the value that uh, training these young athletes uh, to compete but go ahead and be great corporate citizens or future coaches and that type of thing. It's just uh, it's immeasurable, really. And Mindy and I are just so grateful and humble and really appreciate the support and this award. Thank you all very much. The Distinguished Alumnus Award honors individuals who have demonstrated the ideal of excellence by achieving success and recognition creating great pride among the faculty, students, and alumni of Tennessee Tech. The award is for developed talent that reflects favorably on the quality of the university and the faculty and the administration who are charged with creating and sustaining this quality. Since graduating from Tennessee Tech with an MBA and a PhD, Morgan Chetillo has become a highly recognized, distinguished international scholar and leader in the field of special education. Morgan currently serves as professor and department chair of counseling, psychology, and special education at Duquesne University in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He was recently invited by RTI International, an independent nonprofit research institute dedicated to improving the human condition. 
and he was invited to serve on an international panel of researchers in Washington, D.C. to explore ways to increase inclusive educational opportunities in low and middle income countries. He has published three books, including a 2014 teacher preparation textbook entitled Pedagogical Goal Approach to Special Education in Africa, designed for teacher preparation programs on the continent of Africa. Morgan's research has been published in more than 50 publications, and he has presented at more than 60 national and international conferences. Please join me in congratulating the 2019 Distinguished Alumnus Award winner, Dr. Morgan Chitillo. Greetings, everyone. Um, I'm going to start by telling you a very quick story um, about um, this award here. Uh, several years ago, when I first uh, came to Tennessee Tech as an international student coming from Zimbabwe, um, a friend of mine, uh, Dr. Walter Hilton, who is here today, uh, is, um, I just retired from Tennessee Tech and he had recruited me to Tennessee, uh, to Tennessee Tech. And uh, so he was going to receive me from the airport uh, and take care of me. But then unfortunately, uh, everything didn't turn out well. So he had to be in Brazil at the same time. And uh, so he made arrangements uh, so that um, his friend, Dr. Uh, Wallace Prescott, who was a uh, former president of Tennessee Tech and uh, is now late, unfortunately, uh, would pick me up from the airport and then uh, get me registered and take care of me until, uh, until he would come back from Brazil. So Dr. Wallace Prescott did just that. He picked me up from the airport and uh, the following morning, he picked me up from um, Dr. Hilton's house and took me to the university where he was going to get me registered. Uh, and so he took me from one office to the other around campus, getting me registered to the international programs, to the administration building, to the business school. So in each office that we walked into, everybody would stand up and greet us. And um, I got really excited. And I thought, wow, these people are really honoring me, you know, this, this skinny African boy who had just arrived in America, and everybody's standing up. And so I didn't know who Dr. Prescott really was at that point. <laughs> so uh, when I, I was disappointed when I realized who Dr. Prescott was, <laughs> and I realized that all, all these people were not actually honoring me, but honoring Dr. Prescott. So. Uh, Today I'm really excited because this is, this is honoring me. So I'm really excited about that. So, <laughs> um, I'm happy, honored, and greatly humbled to accept this award and to join past recipients who have demonstrated professional success uh, or recognition uh, to effect great pride among the faculty, students, and alumni of this university. Um, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to the Alumni Association uh, for this honor. And um, I would also like to thank some people who have helped me along the way uh, to make this award possible. And uh, first, I would like to acknowledge um, my parents who unfortunately couldn't be here today, uh, who taught me the value of education and believed in me right from the beginning um, and invested every, everything that they had to make sure that, um, to, create, to create a good uh, background for, uh, for me. And towards the end of his long teaching career, my father became a special education teacher only by default. 
because he was one of the longest serving teachers in the school. And uh, because of that, he was assigned to a special education classroom. During the same time, my mother served as assistant to the matron at a boarding school, and her role involved taking care of students with disabilities in this, uh, in this school. This is where I drew my inspiration about special education. Little did I know then that I would end up working to develop special education internationally. I have really, um, I've also been blessed to have an um, amazing and supportive family. Uh, of course, I, my wife of 15 years, Black Cities, who is also an alumnus of Tennessee Tech, and uh, my two sons, Simba and Tinashe, who, uh, who have been very supportive um, when at times I work long hours to try and accomplish what, what I have to accomplish. And of course, to the rest of my immediate family. One of the questions, one of the many questions that I, have of, I was often asked when I, when I was studying at Tennessee Tech was, all the way from Zimbabwe, how did you find yourself at Tennessee Tech? Why Tennessee Tech? Well, it is a long answer but I'm going to shorten it uh, for you to give you a summary of the answer to that question. And here it goes. Once upon a time, there was a retired Tennessee Tech professor named Professor Walter Lee Helton, who was doing missionary work in different African countries, including Zimbabwe. I met Professor Helton, or Baba Pete, as we affectionately call him, when he came to, to Zimbabwe as a visiting professor um, when I was, where I was doing my undergraduate degree. And he taught me one of my undergraduate geography classes at Africa University in Zimbabwe. I was one of many students in that geography class, but for some reason, he singled me out and recruited me to pursue graduate school at Tennessee Tech, uh, partly under his sponsorship, of course. I wasn't sure why he singled me out, but I now know. Professor Helton represented what I later discovered to be the true spirit of Tennessee Tech, a dedicated faculty committed to expanding opportunity. To Baba Pete, this honor belongs to you as well. I thank you for your unselfishness. I was also blessed with outstanding professors um, here at Tennessee Tech for whom I have the deepest respect. Allow me to specifically mention uh, a few names. Dr. John Wheeler, uh, who was my doctoral mentor, um, who is now at East Tennessee uh, State University, uh, for his outstanding mentorship during my doctoral studies. It is Dr. Wheeler who introduced me to the field of special education and inspired me to seek to challenge the status quo by advocating for better service delivery for children with disabilities through provision of best and effective practice. Um, Dr. Bob Bell, who, was, uh, who guided me through my, uh, my MBA studies, and um, Dr. Bell was also my um, spiritual mentor during those, uh, those times as well. I thank you. Dr. Dave Larimore, who is also here today. Um, Dr. Francis Otunye, um, and several other professors uh, that I met at Tennessee Tech and who contributed to preparing me for, for the work that I do and, and that I enjoy doing. I'm really grateful uh, for your dedication and for your excellent preparation. I appreciate each one of you for helping me attain this accomplishment, and I do promise to continue to pursue excellence in my work that focuses on promoting quality education for the many children who are challenged by disability around the world through impactful research and collaborative service. Um, and in doing this, um, continue to fulfill also the mission of this university. Uh, finally, I am really grateful because, uh, and happy because I came to Tennessee Tech and also if, if you look at uh, the news, what's been happening today and what uh, the president, President Oldham just shared uh, a few minutes ago, 
Uh, I'm proud and happy that uh, I came to Tennessee Tech through a legal admission process, and, uh, which makes me all the more proud of my, my alma mater. So thank you, thank you Tennessee Tech, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful. Let's have one more round of applause for all of tonight's award winners. Okay, before I bring Brandon up to conclude this meeting, I'm gonna do one thing right. I do get a do-over. John, would you please stand, sir? Please, stand. No, you. Yes, sir. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Tennessee Tech's head men's basketball coach, John Pelfrey. Uh, again, I want to take this time just to, to thank Morgan, to thank Janie, to thank Phil, and to thank Mark and Mindy for being who you are, for representing yourselves and Tennessee Tech so well. Thank you for, for being part of tonight, everyone, and uh, we hope you have a great night.